Breaking news, if yesterday you told anyone that it was Jacob Tremblay's birthday, or Kate Winslet's birthday, or Neil deGrasse Tyson's birthday, or Jesse Eisenberg's birthday, or any of the other birthdays that I listed yesterday, um, that's wrong. It's Their birthdays are actually today, so today I'm going to have to read off yesterday's birthdays. Ooh, what a twist. What a turn. Oh, we never would have expected that, but at least I can pretend that it was all in the point of the fact that today is National Get Funky Day. So I have like a pretty bad headache today. Um <laughs> and in trying to pull everything together for this episode, I accidentally went to all of like tomorrow's pages first for the sixth and started like writing down some notes and like birthdays and wikipedia articles and stuff like that only to realize that it was the wrong day which is i mean it's good that now i have stuff for tuesday or wednesday even geez already prepped um (laughs) but then when i went to go check the october 5th stuff i learned that i had already talked about that on october 4th so yeah, it's it's been pretty pretty funky of a funky day, seeing as I have there's been a lot of twists and turns in <laughs> me trying to produce this. So not sure how long today's episode is. I'm gonna try and crank it out um, and then get going because it's just been a bit of a long day for me. But with that being said, let's move on to our first national holiday, which obviously is Get Funky Day. As one nation under a groove, we have a collective opportunity to pay homage to the power and majesty of the funk. We're not talking funk as in depressing, but funk as in get happy and celebrate life. Apparently, National Get Funk Day was created by Funky Town Fitness, a fitness center in St. Augustine, Florida, um, after Hurricane Matthew slammed Florida. It says slammed. I would have used a different word, but that's how you know I'm reading. (laughs) A group of Funky Town Fitness folks. Ooh alliteration assembled to create national get funk day every year on october 5th as a way to help people break free of their comfort zones don't know what that has to do with hurricane matthew didn't really explain how that connected but i'm sure they got their meaning for it uh 1971 the godfather of soul makes it funky no one understood the mystery of the funk like james brown but he breaks it down so anyone can understand with the iconic powerhouse song make it funky cool nice uh, the Beastie Boys released Funky Bass in 1992, um, and what is this here? Funk pioneer George Clinton <laughs> releases Give Up the Funk, proving once again why he is the master of the mothership. I don't know if that's a joke that I get. Master of the mothership, George Clinton. All right. Moving on to... National Do Something Nice Day. I did mention in the first podcast about being nice that October 1 through 4 were going to be not-so-nice days because you can only be nice for 24 hours. Uh, But don't worry, today today we not only have one national holiday to be nice for, but two, because there's National Do Something Nice Day and National Be Nice Day. So to explain the differences by just the activities that it gives, uh, National Do Something Nice Day includes volunteering, assisting a stranger, and calling someone just to tell them that you care. Meanwhile, National Be Nice Day is all about hugging a friend, inviting friends over for a dinner party, and spreading the word, I guess spreading the word of niceness, so that more people can be nice. Spread the niceness like a virus. Uh, it says that in 1963, the first smiley face is believed to be made by Harvey Ross Ball, uh, which I think we talked about the other day, because I remember, I remember making a, a joke about Forrest Gump and how he's the real reason that it was created. Um, so I guess they just don't really have too many things to talk about being nice, so they just use the same facts. Uh, let's see if they also use it on this page. Nope. No facts for a national do something nice day. Uh, just, just to be nice. Uh, because it can brighten strangers' days, help others make you feel, or sorry, helping others makes you feel happy. And it reminds us how much good we can do. Um, just wanted to see here if there's anything else. Uh, top five reasons to smile at a stranger. There we go. Being nice feels good. Research has found that being nice to others releases the feel good hormone, serotonin. Two, it's heart healthy. Spreading cheer releases the hormone oxytocin. 
which is known to help lower blood pressure. Three, say goodbye to stress. Showing kindness to others helps to build relationships, which in turn helps lower your stress. Nice. Four, hey, good looking. <laughs> Research has found that nicer people are often perceived as more attractive. <whistles> and number five, less sick days. Being nice to others helps to lower inflammation, which in turn helps to decrease your chances of contracting some diseases. Oh, nice. We need a little bit of that nowadays. <laughs> uh, and then we also got World Teachers Day which I've just been completely distracted by the one point on here. Um, it's talking about how to observe World Teachers Day, which has things similar to the uh, National Janitor Day, like surprise them with a gift and make them feel special. But the third one says, give teachers the royal treatment, having lunch catered, which, okay, yeah, that's fine, or surprising teachers with a 10-minute massage. Um, uh-huh. I don't know. Okay, hold on. It says that this should be done by the school administrations. Okay, because I was going to say, one, it feels weird for a child to just be doing that to their teacher, but also, I feel like the school administrators shouldn't either. Um, there better be a national HR day coming up hot, or else uh, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna have some problems. So apparently, World Teachers Day started in 1994 by UNESCO, um, but it seems to happen like on various days for different countries. So it says here that in Chile, they have Dia del Maestro on October 16th. In Costa Rica, they have Teacher's Day on December 22nd. New Zealand, they have Teacher's Day on October 29th. And South Korea, they have Teacher's Day on May 15th. I, I like that Chile has like a, a cool, a cool word for it rather than all the other ones, which are just, I guess, English, which I don't know if that even makes sense. Um, but like sure surely there's a korean way to say that but oh i don't know i can however give unesco's message from last year which says with the theme young teachers the future of the profession we recognize the critical importance of reaffirming the value of the teaching mission we call upon governments to make teaching a profession of first choice for young people above all we celebrate the work of dedicated teachers around the world who continue to strive every day to ensure that inclusive and equitable quality education and the promotion of lifelong learning opportunities for all become a reality in every corner of the globe nice uh, so next we have a day that might actually surpass Get Funky Day as the best day for this, uh, cause it's, it's National Kiss a Wrestler Day, uh, which I, um, foreshadowed on Sunday when I was <laughs> saying random things from each of the days of the week. So yeah, time to go out and find a, find a wrestler to kiss or a sumo to smooch. Yeah, th that, that's the joke. Uh, <laughs> the website says they're big and strong, straining under their ripping muscles. But for all that power, wrestlers need love too. The October fifth cel oh, this October fifth celebrate National Kiss a Wrestler Day and show your respect for one of the world's oldest and toughest athletic endeavors. Mythology suggests the gods themselves created wrestling. It demands all the elements an athlete strives for: speed, strength, endurance, improvisation, and the mental fortitude to push through adversity, and also acting. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling that out. As far as that goes, though, like, the only wrestling that I've seen has been very, very clearly staged. Um, and it was amazing. There were people smacking each other with chairs. Uh, there were people basically having one, and then the other person just being like, nah, now we're still going, and it just keeps going. Uh, I've seen this for both men's wrestling and women's wrestling, and honestly, like, they're just both fantastic. Like, wrestling being scripted is one of the most amazing things you'll ever see. So in 13,000 BC, uh, there were some cave drawings found in France depicting Babylonian and Egyptian uh, groups wrestling where wrestlers are using most of the holds known to the modern day sport. Wow, that's crazy. So that's like kept pretty true to how it is. That's awesome. Um, in 1888, the US hosts their first wrestling tournament in New York City. And freestyle wrestling joins the Olympics in 1904. And, oh, in 1896, I skipped something. Uh, Greco-Roman wrestling was introduced as an Olympic discipline as well. Oh, there you go. Um, I would say that of all the wrestlers out there, um, I imagine Andre the Giant is the best kisser 
although he is he's no longer with us but i imagine he would have been the best kisser because if you assume that his entire body is proportionate to itself then uh, he has the biggest lips of all the wrestlers and that might just make him the best kisser but sadly i guess we'll never know uh five facts about wrestling uh, number one says that wrestling is in the world's oldest book, stating that in the book of Genesis, the prophet Jacob wrestles with an angel in the Bible. Um, I'm curious if, is, is that a hot take, that Genesis is the world's oldest book? Because, like, I don't actually know what the oldest found, like, writings are, unless it just means because it's, like, from, like, it discusses creation, so therefore is, like, discussing things from the oldest of time. But I don't know. I actually... Huh. I don't know about that. Interesting. Cool. Uh, number two, wrestling is more popular than you think. High school wrestling ranks sixth in participation for all boys sports. Man, we did some wrestling back in high school. High schoolers can't wrestle. We're, we're all like the skinniest little like... <laughs> like what? It was so bizarre. It was weird. Um, number three, wrestling generates income for colleges. Of all NCAA championships, collegiate wrestling ranks in the top five for revenue. Whoa, dang. Uh, number four, wrestling is diverse. Its competitions are held all around the world with almost 200 nations actively hosting events. Uh, and number five, wrestling is not just for men. Uh, since 1994, the number of women who wrestle in high school has grown from 800 to over 16,500. Women's wrestling has been an organized, or sorry, a recognized Olympic sport since 2004. Cool, cool. Uh, why we love National Kiss a Wrestler Day. <laughs> uh I'm just not going to read any of this. I, I kind of just... I'm curious why... What's, what's with the kissing? Um, do, 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 do. Although Kiss Arrested Day seems to be an internet-inspired holiday, it may be connected to the rock band Kiss and its promotional effort to link up with the World Championship of Wrestling. Okay. The idea was to have a wrestler known as the Demon appear in makeup as one of the Kiss characters. Suffice it to say, the deal fell through, but this day remains as a way to honor wrestlers past and present. There you go. And so today is also the first day of the Chumben Festival, um, which starts, yeah, a 15-day religious festival in Cambodia. The Cambodian Buddhists believe that every year the souls of their ancestors are released for 15 days. Uh, this festival marks the start of the journey of souls to purgatory, that in-between place that is neither heaven nor hell. The course of their journey will be decided by their karma and by the offerings made by their living relatives during Chumben. This festival begins at the end of the Buddhist Lent. During this time, foods are cooked for the monks to generate merits that will benefit the dead. Cool. Um, in 1st century BC, both Chumben and the Taoist Ghost Festival came about during the Mahayana period. Mahayana? Okay. Uh, in 802 AD, uh, during the Ang Angkorian period, people followed animism. Although people now follow Buddhism, respect for elders was a practice they continued to follow. Okay, so that's where it initially came from, I guess. Uh, and then in 1181 to 1218, uh, King Jayavarman VII uh, was a monk who came back from hell unscathed. He brought the message from the deceased that they could be freed from suffering if their relatives offered food and alms to monks. There you go. Now we're moving on to National Rhode Island Day. Um, I guess similar to names. There's just certain places that get national holidays. Uh, and I'm not sure what makes National Rhode Island so special, so uh, let's find out. Wrapping up the original 13 colonies, National Rhode Island Day on October 5th recognizes the last colony to join the Union. The Ocean State joined the Union on May 4th, 1776. Persecuted for his beliefs in Massachusetts, Roger Williams established the Rhode Island Colony in 1636 at Providence seeking religious and political freedom. While the colony was first to renounce British rule, Rhode Island was the only state absent from the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in 1787. Uh, they then delayed signing the Constitution, preferring the addition of a Bill of Rights, and then it wasn't until the Constitution was ratified by nine previous states and the threat of taxation on her exports that Rhode Island finally satisfied the document, or ratified the document even, uh, and became the 13th state. So if your children were disappointed with you yesterday after you didn't let them have cinnamon buns because it was National Child Health Day, uh, fear not, for it is National Hot Fudge Sunday Day today. Um, wait a second, what? What? This is July 25th. <laughs> How did this get in here? Why did my search for October 5th bring up a holiday for July 25th? All right, um, possibly time to... Um, 
disappoint your children again because the Sundays, they're not actually happening. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. Found something. Well, the oldest known record of an ice cream Sunday is uh, an Ithaca NY advertisement. The originator of the dessert is still debated. The October 5th, 1892 ad in the Ithaca Daily Journal spelled the ice cream treat with the conventional day of the week spelling, Sunday. Okay, so I see. Uh, it was talked about back in 1892 on October 5th, but it is not actually National Sunday Day today. So uh, you can give them a newspaper instead. I think it is like National Newspaper Week that showed up somewhere. Uh, that might have been last week, though. But yeah, there you go. Get them a newspaper with an ad about hot fudge Sundays. They'll respect you for that for sure. And now on to celebrity birthdays, which are really yesterday's celebrity birthdays. Um, but that's okay. Uh, it's fine. Uh, we got Leanne Pinnock turning 30. She's a pop star, member of the British group Little Mix, and has such songs as Secret Love Song, Black Magic, and Sweet Melody, uh, while also appearing in TV shows like Little Mix, The Search, and RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Uh, we also have Melissa Benoist, Benoist, 33, TV actress who played Supergirl in both Supergirl and Arrow. Uh, I presume there was like a crossover. Um, and she was also in Glee playing Marley Rose. Then we have Alicia, Alicia, <laughs> man, I really gotta just learn how to pronounce names, apparently. Uh, Alicia Silverstone, for 45, movie actress who starred in The Babysitter's Club, American Woman, Braceface, Master of the Universe, Clueless, The Crush, she was Batgirl in Batman and Robin, and finally, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. Uh, oh, and she was in the Scooby-Doo movie, <laughs> what the heck? That should have been first. That's the most important and relevant movie of our time, <laughs> and actually really good. If you watch uh, the two of them in the wrong order, uh, there's a YouTube video on that. And I agree wholeheartedly. Like, if you watch Scooby-Doo 2 before Scooby-Doo 1, they make a lot more sense. So it's it's really interesting. Uh, we also have Dakota Johnson turning 32. She's a movie actress who appears in three movies that will go unnamed, as they are far too sexy for this podcast. Uh, she was also in The Social Network, along with Jesse Eisenberg, whose birthday is actually today. <laughs> um, and she was in 21 Jump Street. Then there's Lil Mama, turning 32. She's a rapper who wrote songs like Shoddy Get Loose, Lip Gloss, Sausage, Scrawberry, and Shoe Game. And she was also in some movies and shows like Fruits of the Heart, All In, When Love Kills, The Felicia Blakely Story, and Crazy Sexy Cool, The TLC Story. And finally, we have Derek Rose, 33, a basketball player for the New York Knicks. He's number four and plays point guard, just like our friend Trey, who, in case you forgot, has a basketball game tomorrow. Now on to random Wikipedia stuff. Back in 1962, the first of the James Bond films came out based on the novels by Ian Fleming. Uh, this movie was titled Dr. No and was released in Britain. Uh, in 1907, the Public Broadcasting Service, also known as PBS, was founded. In 1984, Mark Garneau, Garneau becomes the first Canadian in space. Oh, cool. I feel like I might maybe recognize that name then. I don't fully remember feel like there's another astronaut who's like doing stuff at the moment who's Canadian whose name I would remember if it was said to me well okay if it was said I would remember who it was I'd be like oh yeah that's the that's the astronaut but if it's Mark Garneau then whoops <laughs> and for our for our birth of the day our special history birth uh, 1781 Bernard Balzano a Czech mathematician and philosopher who passed away in 1848. He was a Catholic priest of Italian extraction. And I'm going to read just one of the paragraphs that I stole from his Wikipedia page here, which talks about Satz on Sitch, a proposition in itself. It's a basic notion in Balzano's Wissenschaftsler. It is introduced at the very beginning in section 19, uh, where he first introduces the notions of proposition and idea. The grass is green is a proposition. Uh, in this connection of words, something is said or asserted grass, however, is only an idea. Something is represented by it, but it does not assert anything. Balzano's notion of proposition is fairly broad. A rectangle is round is a proposition, even though it is false by virtue of self-contradiction, because it is composed in an intelligible manner out of intelligible parts. Yeah, no, I was kind of confused by what that was all talking about, too. That's what I get for taking a random uh, article or a random paragraph from page of Wikipedia. But I think I might, <laughs> I might continue doing that for the birth, because that seems pretty fun to do. Just get a little excerpt of their life about who they are. Um, wow, this, we're actually almost at 20 minutes. That's pretty cool. I thought this was going to fall short, because, um, yeah, I've been, like, super, super tired. 
But uh, with that, stay safe, stay funky, and you'll be hearing back from me tomorrow.